This time on Pedal Box, we're doing loads of work on the front of the car, closing in the pedal box, building in our accelerator pedal, and closing in the passenger footwell. The new engine uses a fly-by-wire pedal, so in order to use that with our cable throttle pedal box, we're going to have to make a new linkage, which means removing the pedal box, taking apart the accelerator pedal linkage as it is, and making something to fit onto this unit inside this box in the back. Normally you'd attach the accelerator cable here, and through these three pivots, it will be pulled when you push the pedal down, reversing the motion of your foot. We're going to change this so this fitting actually points backwards and connects onto our accelerator pedal here. So we push this down when the pedal pushes back like this. We've reattached the cable rod into this fitting. Now you can see how this is going to push back once it's attached onto here. And when we operate the pedal, when we operate the pedal, the linkage will move like this. We've cut the pedal down and trimmed a few other little bits and pieces, but we've also hollowed out the very end of this so it matches the radius on the pin that goes into the back of the pedal. So we're going to tack this on and then have a look at how it works through the stroke and see what it's like. And if everything's good, then we'll weld it up. This is our finished pedal. We've just welded the stub on properly and finished it off and put a little bit of paint on. And then this clevis just fits back onto here and we can put this into the car. But first, we need the mounts to screw in the back of the pedal. Now instead of welding nuts onto the back of this thin plate here because it might distort with the heat, we're going to use riv nuts. These are pretty simple things and as the name suggests they work a lot like rivets. We're going to drill a couple of holes through the plate where our bolt holes are, then use a special tool that threads an insert through the riv nut and then pulls it and squashes it. And when it does that it flares out and grabs into the hole and then inside there is a little threaded thing that we can just run all of our bolts into and everything's good. Now that we know where our accelerator pedal sensor is fitting up in this corner, we don't need access into this whole enclosure anymore. We've put all our inserts in, this is closed off. So we can finally, like we've wanted to for a long time, put a lid on it. Now Adrian got a bit carried away in the garage the other night and he turned a flat sheet of steel into this nice enclosure lid, which we're going to pop on the top and seam that all up. Now before I do that, I'm just going to pop the pedal box out and, uh, and we can get cracking. It's not perfect in terms of alignment at the minute, so we're going to get it roughly in place. We're going to align one corner of it and kind of tack in one point, tweak the rest into line, tack another point and sort of tweak it and tack it and tweak it and tack it. Once it's all in the right shape, I'll seam it up like we normally do and we should be good. It's now a couple hours later and we've finished the top half of our footwell here. It's looking quite nice. You'd never guess how ugly these welds were. As usual, the grinder and paint have made us the welders we ain't. So that's all looking quite good. We're going to move on now to doing the other footwell, which is a lot simpler. It's a flat sheet of metal that we're going to cut the corner out to fit over the hoses. Now to back this up to stop it from doing that, we're going to put a nice diagonal brace in, which is also going to give us back some of the torsional rigidity that we've lost through the chassis. We've noticed if we pick up any corner of it, the chassis does twist quite a lot across itself. So we're hoping by putting in another diagonal brace through here, it'll try and give us a bit of that strength back. Now this is a pretty classic piece of cardboard aided design as pioneered by the guys at Bad Obsession Motorsport when they were building Binky. This one's made up from a cereal box that I cut into various smaller panels and then taped together and I worked from one side to the other. So starting at this triangle I mapped out this size and then this piece across here and just added them in gradually. I ended up smoothing this so that this was all one piece without needing an extra fold in it but that was entirely done because I managed to work this out and see where it might be able to stretch to. With that this got made a little bit bigger when it was cut into the metal and we just resized it to fit and really tailored the actual final fit and finish of it when we put the metal panel on. So you can see how this fits over what we eventually made almost exactly. As I say, it was slightly bigger in the end just so that we had a little bit more room for error, which we inevitably had. But this meant that we had a very good position to work out what we needed to cut, where we needed to bend and how we were going to make up the panel to fit properly. 
Of course, along the way, there's a lot of test fit and finish as you're putting each bend in to make sure that all of your marks actually transpose correctly, but that's the nature of the game. If you have a better idea for how we should make this panel, email us at pedalboxshow at gmail.com. The cross brace we're putting in here is fairly simple, apart from the fact we have this mount in the middle of it, or not quite in the middle of it, which holds the tank. So we're going to have to make a brace that goes from here on the mount to the top corner, and then from the mount to the bottom corner to create linearity all the way down the line. We're also probably going to have to brace in the middle of this bracket as well, just to stop it compressing between the box. So we're just using regular inch box, we're going to cut a notch out to go around the top of this bracket, and then slice this to fit into the top corner here. And then from there, we can move on to fitting our firewall panel, which we've roughly marked out this section to go around the pipes. And we're going to fold this so we have a flange that we can work the rest of the tunnel onto when we build it. Now the observant of you will have noticed that there is one part of this firewall section that hasn't been finished yet, which is this lovely big square that our steering column comes through. The reason we haven't finished that yet is in part because we don't know how we're going to do it. We're not sure how we're going to seal this section around the steering column without impeding its operation, which is part of the SVA. It has to be able to turn freely from side to side. But we don't want to let any water that might come up anywhere through the center of here eject onto our feet when we're driving because that will be cold and miserable. The bulk of the plan at the moment is to just have a small bolt-on panel that fits through here. This will make getting the steering column in and out if we need to a lot easier because we just poke it through, apply the panel to this end and bolt it in place rather than having to feed it through a very small aperture in the dark under here. This hole's nice and big and it will fit the UJ through very simply. We can pop it through, put it in and put the rest of it back together. At least that's the plan for now anyway. Here's the next piece of the puzzle to the front of the car. This is our firewall panel that we've notched to go around these pipes and we've made this big enough that we think we can fit everything we need through this gap. So we're going to get this welded in across here, something like this. And that will block off the end of the footwell on the passenger side. Well, that was a chore. Despite spending all day going around very carefully trying to avoid distortion in this panel, it's still warped and twisted a bit, which is really frustrating and definitely confirms that I am not very good at welding in panels. I'm glad Chris did all of the stuff on here because, frankly, he probably should have done this one. So there's just one more job to do now, which is to refit the steering column, which is surprisingly difficult when you're on your own, more so because we've enclosed the top of the footwell. We're leaving the pedal box out for the time being. We're going to have to remove it again soon when we start looking at the pipework for the brakes, clutch and fuel lines. So until then, it can stay in the box. Thanks very much for watching. If you'd like, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, that'd be great. Also, leave a comment below. We'll try to respond to everybody and like the video. If you'd like to check out our merch, stickers, hats, t-shirts and more at shop.pedalbox.show. And if you'd like to support the builds directly, you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and become a patron of the channel. 
It's been a pretty successful episode, all told, getting the accelerator pedal into the pedal box, closing these two areas off, but I think we've definitely learned that we've been doing panels wrong when we were fitting these up. We should be creating flanges that we can weld onto our structure rather than seaming around the edge. It's a lot easier to try and keep clean, and this look doesn't really come out all that well for the amount of effort that it takes. There's a few bits we still need to tidy up, but the compressor's suddenly gone and broken on us, so we need to look into that and find out why, and then we can get the die grinder in and really tidy up a couple of the corners. So I'm not gonna show you any shots of that right now, because frankly, this is ugly. Thanks for watching once again. Do join us next time.